let me start to talk about the mimics that I guess in the clinical neurological setting, neurologists need to take into account. So regards to geminal neuralgia, we know that the distribution will be, or the most common distribution will be in the maxillary, that will be B2 and B3 mandibular division. Will be extraoral, but also intraoral. So what about if a trigger area is inside the mouth of the patient? So you need to consider as a differential diagnosis, well, what about if it's a dental or periodontal problem? And yes, the main pain of trigeminal neuralgia is paroxysmal, sharp shooting, electrical, but also can have with concomitant continuous pain. Dental pain is more con 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 continuous, and we have different types. But I would say if, uh, if the patient is presenting any intraoral pain, maybe the first practitioner they will be seeing would be a dentist. But what about if they go to their medical professional and they say, you know what, I have this pain inside my mouth. And the question in the medical setting would be, have you seen your dentist? And if they say no, well, you will refer it. If they have said, yes, I have ruled out. Yes, I went to my dentist, you don't find anything wrong. Then yes, we can open a discussion because not only trigeminal neuralgia could be a disorder that also can reflect pain in the face. That would be maybe time for another conversation. But I would say that for one of the pains, dental pains that are very, that can share more characteristics of trigeminal neuralgia will be the pain coming from a cracked tooth or a fractured tooth. This type of pain will be like a sharp, shooting, zingy type of pain and will be elicited when the patient kind of clenches or bites. And that could, you know, mimic more the characteristics of trigeminal neuralgia. However, we're not going to have refractory periods. However, uh, have other differences. But I wanted to put to mention that as well as in my presentation, because sometimes we receive referrals that impression is trigeminal neuralgia or a typical facial pain and was a cracked tooth. So I just wanted to mention. Another thing that I think is interesting to our colleagues in the neurological setting is that what about if it's anything compressing any of the branches of the trigeminal nerve? What about if it's something compressing the inferior alveolar nerve? And the, the pain is going to be intraoral and can be sharp shooting. So normally, you know, in, in dentistry and the orofacial pain realm, we have, we take imaging, x-rays. So when a patient comes with us with a suspicious type of pain that is sharp shooting electrical or any type of other pain when we have ruled out any dental cause, we take imaging. So I mentioned in my, uh, in my presentation that uh, patients that have something compressing the, uh, any of the peripheral nerve branches, and one of the lesions that is benign, is completely benign, is cementosus dysplasia. This is non-neoplastic, is uh, well delimited, and is just uh, a normal. It's a lesion. It's a normal bone, but is replaced with a fibrosis matrix of of a, or a matrix of connective tissue and with abnormal bone or cementum. Cementum is the tissue that surrounds the root of your teeth, and this can be formed. It's very localized. It's not uncommon in the craniofacial area. And you know, we have, have cases, or at least in my realm, as an orofacial pain specialist, I have seen cases that is referred as a, a typical facial pain or trigeminal neuralgia, and also is something compressing there. So also something, you know, to think about it. Another thing that I mentioned in my talk is what about if it's Eagle syndrome? So Eagle syndrome is a musculoskeletal disorder that is just the uh, elongation of the stylohyoid ligament, it could be inflamed, or a calcification of the stylohyoid ligament. I mentioned in my talk because I think it's important because uh, sometimes patients can refer pain in the ear, I can be misdiagnosed as TMD, or burning type of pain in the face. And this was one of the patients that came refer to me as trigeminal neuralgia when actually was Eagle syndrome. But it's in, uh, again in the orofacial pain realm and in the dental realm, we do a panoramic x-ray and we, we can see if those styloid ligaments are long. 
So we have that advantage. And of course, we do other type of examination. So differential diagnosis would be trigeminal epiphyseal syndrome to consider trigeminal neuralgia, glossopharyngeal neuralgia, TMD, or other headache disorders, just to mention. So now, I the one of the ones that I think I spent a lot of time talking during my talk was temporomandibular disorders. So temporomandibular disorders or TMD is a constellation of clinical problems that will involve the temporomandibular joint, the muscles of mastication, and their associated structures. The pain that the patient is gonna be presenting is gonna be associated with function, temporomandibular joint biomechanics. So what I mean by that, pain at chewing, pain at opening, uh, pain at yawning, pain at laughing, right? We don't have control how much we can open. So any joint biomechanics. So this pain is dull, ache, pressure, tightness, pulling, very different than trigeminal neuralgia. And uh, yes, can be sometimes sharp if it's uh, something going on in the inside the temporomandibular joint. But you know, we so other characteristics and other findings we can, uh, you know, we, we need to you know make sure that we take into account. But it's not sh sharp shooting electrical. Doesn't have periods of remission. Doesn't have a uh, uh, refractory periods. Is what I want to say. So. Uh, and it was important that was mentioned in the talk because sometimes even though doesn't fit the criteria, it could be misdiagnosis of uh, trigeminal neuralgia when actually was TMD or TMD when actually was trigeminal neuralgia that I presented a case during my talk. Another thing that I would like to say about, about this is that um, so for temporomandibular disorders, we have joint problems muscle problems, and, and headache secondary to TMD. So you see we have different classifications, but let's say joint and muscle. From the muscle type of disorders, we have myofascial pain. And the reason I wanna just mention a little bit about that is because myofascial pain is pain that when we do an examination, the muscle mastication, and we find a tight band, we press and we have this referral along the muscle or beyond the boundaries of the muscle, different structures. And myofascial pain from the masseter, the temporalis, or the anterior digastric can refer to teeth. And that will be maybe the symptom that the patient is telling you, no, doctor, my teeth is hurting, and we check, no, it's nothing wrong with your teeth. So it's something important to consider because even though it doesn't fit the criteria, sometimes can, you know, we received, uh, or I have received uh, misdiagnosis like that. Anyway, but what about if trigeminal neuralgia can have some, can also patients can present muscle pain? Yes, so let me explain. And maybe that would be the reason why sometimes there's a little bit of confusion. So imagine that the patient has trigeminal neuralgia in the B3 distribution. It has a trigger area extra aura. It's applying makeup or washing their face and boom, the sharp shooting, uh, excruciating pain. Well, we have the masseter there, and of course we have other muscles. The masseter also is innervated by the B3 mandibular division. So imagine that horrendous excruciating pain, the muscle will contract. Can be an spasm there. And we call that secondary muscle contraction or protective muscle contraction. The muscle is just protecting that area. That means that the patient, oh, this is TMD. No, no, no. It's trigeminal neuralgia with a secondary muscle component and response to the excruciating pain. Anyway, um, so now other pains that I think was important that also I mentioned in my talk was uh, the persistent idiopathic facial pain or persistent idiopathic dentoalveolar pains. Why? And I think also my colleagues in neurology will share the same. These are referrals that we do that could be misdiagnosed of uh, astrogeminal neuralgia. And yes, we have an idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia, right? Paroxysmal or, con or with concomitant continuous pain. But in regard to this, uh, for, for these persistent idiopathic pains, they are continuous. We're not going to have a refractory period. 
And this is when also we have is uh, is uh, diagnosis by exclusion. We have not detect in a, in our clinical evaluation or imaging something wrong. Uh, in regards to uh, it, um, the persistent idiopathic facial pain, um, now we have a diagnostic criteria that is an international classification of headache disorders and the international classification of orofacial pain that talks about them. But at least we have something before we didn't have much, but at least we have something that gives us a framework to make the differential diagnosis. But the pain is kind of dull, diffuse, sometimes doesn't follow their, neuro, um, their neuroanatomy. And uh, so sometimes patients can refer to other sites. And if you see in the literature, sometimes some of the characteristics kind of uh, present some characteristics of neuropathic pains. But it's still, you know, we, we need to learn a lot about what really is going on. And, uh, but again, it's a diagnosis, a diagnosis by exclusion. Another one that I mentioned is the one that is the persistent idiopathic dental violar pain. So this was the one known as a, a, a typical ontalgia or phantom tooth pain. And this is the same characters of the, 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 the um, idiopathic persistent facial pain, but inside, intraorally. So that would be in an area that was existing a tooth or the periodontum, but it's not tooth. No pathology has been, uh, you know, detected. So the international classification of orofacial pain gives us a criteria, and briefly we'll say that this pain is after can happen after three months, more than three months, but no, not evidence of anything that have triggered it, but. If it's any dental, if it's a surgery or dental procedure that we, we detect in the medical history, then that will be more than six months. If it's less, they will be diagnosed as a post-traumatic trigeminal neuropathic pain. So this type of pains is good to consider. And just to talk about, I would say all the trigeminal neuropathic pains, trigeminal neuralgia or these ones, because the, when the patients come to us, and I think also my colleagues in neurology have had the same information, Sometimes these patients have gone for multiple physicians and doctors to try to figure out what is wrong with them. And sometimes they already have had multiple dental procedures that were not indicated, but you know, in attempts to, to relieve their pain. So that is important. It's about headache disorders that needs to be considered during the differential diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia. So we have primary headache disorders that will be Migrant tension type headache, trigeminal encephalitis, just to mention. And uh, we have the uh, trigeminal autonomic cephalalgias that we have the short lasting unilateral neurogiform headache attacks. So these ones will be uh, in the B1 distribution and will be described as a sharp shooting, could be electrical, could be stabbing, but we have profound autonomic phenomena. Trigeminal radia can have, it's very rare, but can have some autonomic phenomena, but not as profound as these headaches. And we have the short lasting unilateral neurology form headache with uh, conjunctiva and injection and tearing. And we have the short lasting unilateral uh, neurology form headache with, uh, as soon as you know, with, uh, with autonomic uh, uh, characteristics or, 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 or presentation. So, so uh, these headaches will be in B1, profound autonomic phenomena, and will not have a refractory period like trigeminal neuralgia does. So that is important to mention. But what about if this, you have a, a characteristic of trigeminal neuralgia with profound autonomic symptoms in the mid phase? So now the international classification of orofacial pain mentioned about or of partial pains that resemble characteristics of primary headache disorders. So how bizarre that your headache, a headache put in your face. That will be a good uh, uh, topic for conversation later. But um, we have the trigeminal autonomic uh, facial pain, 
and we have the same, the short lasting uh, unilateral neurogiform facial pain. And will be this autonomic symptomatology, like the, the song Torsuna syndrome in the mid face, but with profound autonomic phenomena and the same profound autonomic phenomena. And we don't want to have a refractory uh, pe period like trigeminal neuralgia has. So that would be the, dif the differential diagnosis. And I think from what I talk will be the ones that have in my mind, and I think I discussed at the at the meeting at the American Academy of Neurology.